guys, welcome to an episode of Shoots with Jasper the Dog. Today we're going to be talking about Jasper. What, what are you doing, trying to hijack my show? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Uh, it's been a while since I posted the last video because as you saw, I've got my little puppy. we got Jasper, the Border Collie. Um, so I'm spending as much time as I possibly can training and hanging out with my dog. So it's been fun, but time for another video today. And as you guys saw, we're talking about cheap color film. Um, this is my opinion personally. Uh, the two films we're going to be talking about today is uh, Fuji Extra or well, Fuji Superior 400 um, and Fuji Color Plus C200. Um, these are my two favorite consumer films. Uh, I feel like they just give you amazing results. They're nice and cheap. Um, you know, some people are probably thinking, well, what about Kodak? But we will get into that. Um, but first of all, main reason is, uh, you know, these films are cheap. Um, the C200, you know, 200 speed, um, you know, bit of grain there, but it's, you know, it's a good film to start with because it definitely gives you that, you know, that film look. You definitely get the film look with this. A little bit of grain, but it's really nice colours. Stuff's $5.50 Australian a roll. So it's super cheap um, for 36 exposures. You know, you can shoot tons of the stuff and really not break the bank. The 400 speed film, the you know the Superior 400, which I love to use. Um, again, great color film. The grain structure is probably a bit of a bit more finer grain than the Color Plus. It's definitely like the Fuji's next step up um, as far as you know, you know consumer grades of film go. Um, but it's a really good 400 speed film. Great colors, great sharpness, um, and this stuff's only about 750 to 8 Australian dollars a roll. So still really really cheap, and especially when you compare it to something like Portra 400 or Fuji Pro 400H, um, you know, other, you know, generally used 400 speed, film, 400 speed films, sorry. It's, you know, it's so much cheaper. Um, so, you know, you can shoot more, you can get more photos in, um, you know, and spend more time shooting and working on your skills, you know, in photography as, a, as opposed to, you know, being very careful with, oh, you know, it's, it's a $15 roll of portrait, I better take, you know, every really good photo I can, I don't want to waste the film. Um, that's why I like consumer films, because they're cheap, they give you that really nice film look, um, and you know, it's just a nice cheap film to keep shooting and get out there more and shoot more films. So one of the main reasons personally for me why you know, I think these are the best, um, your preference might change, but for me, I love those cooler tones. I love the blues and I love the greens that Fuji tends to extenuate. Um, nothing against Kodak, I mean Portra, um, you know, your Kodak Gold and Ultramax, they're, they're great films, they just have that warmer tone to it. Um, and for my, you know, style of photography, I, I prefer those cooler Tones. First of all, I should say with the uh, we'll start with the Color Plus 200. Um, I have shot this film in a whole range of conditions. Um, you know, landscape photos, street photography. Um, you know, it's just very, very versatile, cheap film, which I think is great for beginners. Um, you know, it, it gives you a really nice color palette, um, especially if you like to work like I do with a lot of beach, you know, ocean, um, landscapey stuff like that. So we'll jump into the computer and I'll quickly just show you guys a few photos and you can see how, you know, how the Fuji kind of works with the, the different landscapes or different subjects to see how those colors really do pop. So a little series I shot a while ago, guys, and I put it up on my Instagram and that was my um, one day on Route 30 where I drove, um, you know, I've got family out in the country here in Western Australia, four and a half hour drive from Perth, from the main city where I live, uh, down to Albany. And I, this time I decided to stop along the way um, and kind of shoot the decay in the countryside and anything that stood out to me, um, you know, along the drive. So I used C200 for this, um, you know, because it's a really cheap film. I thought it would give me a really nice film look. And some of the photos I got were amazing. Now, first one here you have a look at. Now we've got this, um, big semi-trailer truck loaded with hay bales in the middle of a field on the side of the road. I mean, I absolutely love this photo, but if you have a look, we get really nice, you know, greens in the trees along the background and some nice blues in the sky, but see, we get all these, the, the warmer tones, which is why I wanted to shoot color on this trip instead of black and white, because, you know, because it's really, you know, peak summertime, a lot of dry, dry grass, um, and all the dry wheat fields I thought would look really, really good. But as you can see here, those colors we get, like they're really, really nice yellows and browns, um, and the wheat, you know, it looks amazing, um, which is generally something you don't see for Fujifilm. You think, you know, all those warmer colors 
would you know probably be better to shoot one of the, the Kodak films. But I feel like you know that oversaturation, that over warmth could kind of you know kind of kill the image and not look as good. And this is just one of the reasons why I love Fuji because you know contrary to what people might think when you know they automatically go okay you know Fuji is the cooler tones, Kodak is the warmer tones. But we've got some really, really nice warm tones here with a cheap, you know, it's a $5.50 film and it's great results. So this is a, another photo from that trip. You know, it's an old roadhouse that used to be on the way down there. And you can see, you know, um, it's pretty much gone now. Very derelict. And I love the photo. But you can see we've got really nice blues and greens, even the pinks. If you see the pinks on the on the, on the drum, uh, fuel drum can there and on the top of the, the sign there, Fuji just does really, really nice pinks as well. And all these colors, the color palette is just, you know, very light, very airy. It's not too oversaturated. It's not too warm. You know, the Fuji, the Color Plus, the, C2, well, the C200 just has these really, really nice tones. Um, and for a $5.50 film, I mean, look at the results you can get. You can't go wrong with this at all. Another roll of, of uh, Fuji C200 I shot, this was a while ago in the southwest of Western Australia. Um, as you can see here, this is one of my favorite surf breaks um, in the world. This is a break called Three Bears near Yallingup in Western Australia. And this is Fuji. This was shot with my Nikon F3 back then. But we've just got these amazing, you know, the blues and the greens. I mean, that's why I love Fuji for, you know, beach and ocean stuff, photography like that, because the, the color palette that it offers really just complements. You know, it complements the blue ocean with the greens and, and the blue sky. And you just get these really, really beautiful color palettes, as you can see here. You know, we've still got a bit of grain, as you can see through the back of that image. Um, you know, so it's definitely, definitely looks like film. But, you know, for $5.50 film, again, it's a great performer. Likewise, this is a, another shot um, down there of, of the coastline, as you guys can see, that we've got those... You just this is why I love the film. The greens look amazing um, on all the cliff face and the rocks there, and then again with the ocean, it is just a really, really good cheap film that you can get amazing results with without spending you know ten to fifteen dollars on a more professional um, roll of film. You can you know amazing results with a cheap film like this, which is another reason I think you know the, the Fuji consumer stuff is fantastic. Now guys, the Superior, whether you're shooting the two hundred or the four hundred, um, me personally I usually always shoot the four hundred um, in play of something like uh, Fuji Pro 400H or you know Kodak Portra 400 because it's you know as I said seven to eight dollars a roll it's really cheap we've got that 400 speed film which is why I absolutely love this film for my Nikonos um, underwater camera I absolutely love it again same thing we've got going on as I was saying before you know we've got those really you know beautiful blue and green tones for, you know within the ocean and stuff which obviously you know Fuji does lend itself to that so it can really you know make for some really really amazing images likewise I'll show you guys this is you know some shots that I've just shot recently on my um, Nikonos 5 with Superior 400 um, and we can see some of the results so this shot here this is um, one of my brother's young brother brother's mates um, Matt pull, you know, about to pull in and get barreled and you can just see that um, you know the blues and you know the greens in the water just look really really nice. Fuji just does such a better job with those cooler tones um, than Kodak does. So as I said this is a fantastic film to shoot you know if you're shooting beaches, landscapes, um, stuff like that. Such a great film. Again we've got another shot out here from that session. This is one of the boys um, out there you know pulling into a barrel um, and you can see that you know we get those really nice you know bluey and green colors but also we get a bit of warmth on the rocks as well there's you know there's some browny yellow tones um, you know in the side of the groin in the rocks there that you can see and even the skin tones on on the guy pulling into the barrel here we still get you know a bit of warmth you know the, the things that the Kodak films are more known for we're still getting those um, but they're just not as overpowered as I feel Kodak can be sometimes it can be a bit overpowered this is why I love the Fuji film we just get beautiful tones throughout um, you know the 400 superior 400 really fine grain structure beautiful colors 400 speed you know you can't ask for much more in a consumer film so not to be too biased towards you know shooting oceans and landscapes with the film uh, you know the Fuji superior and the color plus um, or C200, sorry, um, they do do well for skin tones and portraits um, and more intimate work, you know, whereas some people might prefer Kodak. I mean, I just think the color palette on these is fantastic. Um, if you look at this image here, 
you know, shot I took of some horses on some Superior 400. Um, this whole role I did actually overexpose and rate the film at 200 um, just to see what it would look like. So as you can see here, you know, we've got really, really nice dark brown tones and light tones. You know, the, the horses look beautiful and the film does such a good job there. And again, this shot here, this is also down south. Um, this is my brother and his partner. Uh, we're letting off some steam down at the gun range. Um, and as you can see, this sort of shot here, um, we do have some really nice, you know, warm colors as well. I mean, it's not completely, even though we've got a lot of green, um, you know, that Fuji tends to probably oversaturate. It's not too oversaturated here. You know, we still got nice browns and some yellow tones throughout there. Um, the skin tones, as you can see, they look very accurate, you know, it's just such a great film um, and it's very cheap as well, you know, you just get really good results every time you use this film. And then this shot here, you can see this is um, this is when we first went and, me and Em went and visited um, our dog Jasper, um, you know, two weeks before we picked him up, he was only uh, six weeks old here. Um, but we're indoors here, this was shot with the F3, indoors, um, you know, you can see the, the skin tones, I mean, it looks really, really nice, Em's brown hair and her skin looks like it should do you know it's not oversaturated it's not um you know there's not too much warmth to it she doesn't look yellow or anything like that which i think kodak films sometimes can do if you're not you don't expose properly whereas because fuji's you know leans a bit more to those cooler tones you kind of don't have to worry about people coming out looking like an oompa loompa or something like that but as you can see here you know really sharp film you know uh the colors are beautiful for indoors and the skin looks great um seven dollar roll of film Excellent result. So guys, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. These, these two are my favorite cheap consumer films and I highly recommend um, you guys getting into, you know, some Fuji film and having a play around it because you will absolutely love the results. Um, you know, if you're just getting into film and you're trying to find which, you know, which film stock you like, I mean, a lot of people do go for the consumer grade stuff um, because it's a lot cheaper when you first start shooting film and you're shooting a lot and you may be making a lot of mistakes. So I definitely recommend getting into these. Um, especially because there is a little bit of talk out there on the web that Fuji might be discontinuing a lot of their films um, and the superior line could end up on the chopping block. If that's the case, if it, you know, if it all confirms, I think I'll be uh, buying a whole lot of bulk stock of it um, to try and get me through as long as I can. But I definitely recommend you guys get out there and try some of it uh, before it, you know, it could be gone. Um, but anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Shoots with Coops. Happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next one.